be converting this tank to salt water to fresh water. And then my dad's going to clean the tank out. And then we're going to put striped the puffer fish in it. So, I've been considering for a while, if you've been watching any of my live streams, what to do with the various tanks that I've got here. Um, so, salt water tank here. This is going to become puffer tank for the Fahaka puffer. Now, it's a, roughly it's a three foot cube, so it should get me another year or two of the Fahaka puffer in there. This tank here, the pea puffer tank, that's going to stay the pea puffer tank. This tank here, which was a little shrimp tank, is going to become a shrimp and snail tank. As those three said, I'm looking at this tank, which is my saltwater tank. Um, I just want to use this volume for something else. So we're going to look at today how to swap over fresh water to salt water. I'd love to say it's going to be a lot more complicated than removing the salt water, cleaning it and replacing it with fresh water, but that's pretty much it. So if you don't want to watch the whole process, feel free to skip ahead. So this is the salt water tank. Um, all these bubbles are because I've dropped the water level because I've been doing various bits and bobs. Um, we've got three clownfish, two damsels, a bunch of crabs, uh, couple of corals in there and some various other beasties so I know there are brittle stars in here I know there are bristle worms there's probably a bit of aptasia um, but yes there's all kinds of all kinds of things in there. so my plan is I'm going to take out all this rock I'm going to move it downstairs into one of the tanks downstairs uh, and primarily use the rock as the filtration so I'll get there's a couple of power heads in there so I'll get those power heads getting the water circulating uh, in the new tank but first I've emptied the tank that I'm going to use and I'm starting to refill it with water now we'll get that salted up to temperature um, and make sure it's okay before we start thinking about moving these guys so the first thing I want to do here is check the salinity of this water to make sure that I get the same salinity when I go downstairs. So here we are down in the fish room. Um, this is the tank that I'm going to use for the saltwater tank. It's about 100 litres or so, maybe a bit more than that. It's just filled up with uh, fresh water at the moment, plain fresh water. Uh, so I need to add some sand, sand, salt even. And the salt that I've got is, I'm not, it's not a recommendation or anything, it just happens to be what I've got is this uh, Ocean Reef Pro from Aquatics and I roughly need about three and a half kilos to get this up to the same salinity which is a specific gravity of um, 0.26 I think we're going for but I'll test it all that and I'll show you me testing that afterwards and um, so as it stands all I've done is clean this out give it a really good scrub um, there's still bits of duckweed there, so if you've ever had duckweed, you'll know my pain there. It'll probably still be there in a year's time. I've stuck in two of these small wave makers. Um, there's a heater in the tank. The, the water's cold at the moment because it's just gone out of storage. I'll just leave this overnight. I'm going to dump in the salt at the moment, uh, let it mix in tank, and then I'll add the rocks, and then I'll add some of the sand from the tank upstairs, and then I'll add the fish. So like I say, no filtration in this tank other than the live rock that's going in there um, straight away. So no external filters, no sumps, no nothing like that. Um, I had hoped that I'd be able to use my little hang on back skimmer in here because it's a more appropriate size for this tank. But there's like a little lip on these tanks. So I'm not sure whether it'll um, get in there and have enough space. It was rubbish anyway, so I'm not that bothered. Uh, but yeah, so that's the plan. So now I need to measure out some salt and get it stuck in there so we'll do that so if you've never ventured into marine before 
um, you might think that's an awful lot of salt for such a small tank. I thought that too. Turns out that's just what it is. Um, so if you are new to the marine side of things, you have to use a lot of salt. Once you get this in, in the salinity right, um, other than water changes, you don't need to add any more salt again. So I will be topping this off as the water evaporates. Um, but this is just the, so that's oh, kind of three and a half kilos worth of salt. That's going to go in there. Um, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? So I'll just use my little cup, essentially, dump it in. So the water's cold at the moment. Um, that will heat up. I'll leave that overnight and overnight to mix as well. Ultimately, try and get that salinity right. Also, be aiming for a pH around eight, and then we should be good to go. We can get some fish in. Also, if you ever build yourself your own fish room, make sure you leave a bigger gap than that. So annoying to catch fish and do things like empty salt into tanks. Anyway, I'll, you can leave me to it. I'll come back when we've got something more interesting to show you. My trusty bucket in hand. Now I'm going to take some of the rocks out here. And I'm going to pick all the ones that don't have any corals on them at the moment. I can't take all the rock in the tank downstairs because it's a lot smaller. So I'll just pick out a few bits, take them downstairs, try a few arrangements and see what works basically. to me now, once I put all the rocks in, it's going to displace quite a bit of the water. So if I'd wanted to save a few pennies, I should have probably only filled it up yay high and mix the salt and then added the rock and um, there's no point adding the rock first because that just messes up with the mix and um, get some dead spots and things like that but say la vie it's done now so i'm just going to get the rest of the rocks that i want in here in and then we'll add some of the sand that we'll take from the tank upstairs let that settle down and then we can get some fish in there's already a ton of critters in there that i've seen floating about just by moving the rock with some brittle stars and I don't know if you can see them, some of them floating around and grabbing onto bits of rock. But yeah, like I say, we'll get them all in and then get some fishing. heater to the back and um, I've actually put a power head behind these rocks which is going to blow the water through the rocks and the heater's in that path of the floor so that will dissipate the heat better uh, and hide the heater. So that's the plan. So I'm now going to try and not crack it when I place the rocks around about it. So that'll do for now. I've got two more rocks, which are the ones with the corals on them, which I want to place a bit more prominently. Um, and then we'll just let it settle, like I said. Little snails made his way in without me knowing. Um, it's one of the snails that they live in the substrate and just come up to eat basically. So it's still really dirty, but Clyde, I've just stuck this in an extra external filter in there so as we can clear it up a little bit faster. Moving the rocks around seems to have stirred everything up and made it all gunky. Um, this blue line here, you've seen this before. I've got my bucket with my fish down here. And that's just my little drip acclimation line, it's just a bit of an air line with a little tap on the end. And I can adjust the flow of that as much as I want. 
You've seen me do this in videos before where you can either use one of these taps or just tie a knot on it and depending how tight you tie the knot uh, can adjust the flow rate. Um, the reason I am drip acclimating because the water is pretty much the same is I just want to give this as much chance as I can to clear it up so I know the water in here is clear and fine um, so I'm going to give it a while, get them, make sure they're exactly the same because this is fresh water even though the parameters I've checked are the same, like the pH and the salinity and things like that um, they're coming from a tank with aged water in it uh, and I, I haven't got all the test kits so just belt and braces, just trying to make sure as much as possible do a bit of drip acclimation, I'll give them here about probably about half an hour because uh, I'm trying to do 15 things at once and then we should be good to get them in and that's it, stage one complete um, we've got the the scape in inverted commas. Um, there's still some playing around to be done with that, but I'm fairly happy with it. It's in. It's all the fish are happy. The parameters are fine. Um, you can see we've got a couple of the corals, mushrooms, and leather corals. Everything's happy enough. All the polyps are extended. Um, yeah, the fish are looking okay. So we've got behind the rocks, we've got a heater around about there. I've got one wave maker, that cord there is to one wave maker or a power head, which is blowing water through the rocks and past the pump. We've got another one here pointing kind of through there, the rocks there and this way, which will hopefully get a little bit of circulation going through those rocks because the rocks is the filtration. Um, no sump, no filter, nothing like that. I may well add an overhead filter up here at some point, some kind of overhead sump or something like that, or I might turn this tank into a little sump and feed that. Um, but for now, that'll do. The water's cleared up nicely. The lights aren't great. These are just some cheap LED lights, so I might change some of the lighting options at some point. So that's the saltwater tank set up in the fish room. Um, let's have a quick run through everything else that's going on. So this tank, I just got some off cuts from this tank as I was moving stuff around so there's some plants and some bits of wood in there there's just a few plecks in there and a couple of guppies and here is the discus the Martin Ung discus they were in here as a kind of breeding project they kind of gave up the ghost on the breeding so I've decided to put them through some quarantine and move them into the main display tank in the living room so that will be happening soon they've been going through quarantine I've had a fish from the display tank in with them for this part of a month so I'm fairly happy that they're okay now so they'll be going up shortly the other one's gone back up already and um, that one there is just in the middle of doing a big poo which is lovely I've never known fish to poo like these ones before in my life I don't know if you can see that but just kind of there big massive poop a bit constipated possibly and um, down here we've got the bristlenose breeding tank all hiding but yeah they're all in there doing their thing we've got the guppy and java moss tanks here and um, nothing much to see in there at the moment over here's the planty tank as you can see that's taken off massively and um, we've got the CO2 set up here that I've talked about before. This is the JBL Pro Flora CO2 tank. Um, this diffuser, I'm not really very happy with it because it, it keeps giving me, keeps clogging essentially, and I think forcing all the bubbles through one place and it's proving very hard to clean. So if you've got any tips on how to clean these things, let me know. But essentially, I've turned it way down at the moment. Um, but. I've placed this power head above it so the bubbles come out here, get hit by this and thrown around the tank which seems to be working quite well. I've put in this little thing here just to stop the floating tanks so I've got some water lettuce and stuff and millions of bloody duckweed that I can't get rid of but water lettuce over here and it kept coming down and clogging up this pump so I've just put this in as a little barrier to them. Yeah but the plants are looking really good um, as always check out aquariumadventures.co.uk you want to buy any of these plants they're not all listed on there but let me know if you fancy anything and then up here is the puffer food it's just snail tanks there's some shrimp and some guppies in there as well because I was having every intention of doing some guppy breeding programs but I've just not got time at the moment 
You stripe the puffer fish. He's just having a little sand bath. He does like to bury himself every now and again. And check things out. See him whether it come out in a second or two. But that will do. Then it's a case of getting the fahaka upstairs. And before I can do any of that, I obviously need to clean out the other tank properly. But for now, I think that'll do us. That'll do stage one. Stage two will be the clean up of the salt water tank and getting the fahaka puffer upstairs. But let me know what you think in the comments. Is there anything I could do better or do differently? And as always, if you haven't already, click that like button, click the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any future videos, and come and join me on a live stream one night and have a chat. But for now, I think we'll sign off there. Thank you very much everyone for joining me, um, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.